everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I'm going to dye something fun and a little bit pixelated. My goal is to create something pixelated on some sock yarn. Uh, today we're going to dye Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon, and my thought is that rather than going for something repeating, uh, maybe we'll do something more random and have... Think about like one of my grid color mixing exercise things where I'm gonna have four colors and sort of blend them into the middle, but I'm gonna do that by adding drops of color. And I'm very excited to see how this will turn out. But before we jump in and look at the colors, I would like to give a huge shout out to today's lab partner, Andy. Uh, Andy, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you're gonna love the yarn and this pixely project. And also, I suppose before we look at the colors, which I'm planning on starting with some primaries, we'll mix maybe some secondaries with that. Uh, I need to go ahead and pre-soak the yarn. So I'm gonna go soak this in just some plain tap water with no acid for at least 30 minutes, uh, just so the yarn is nice and wet. For our dye colors today, I'm going to start with three primaries. We have Dharma Acid Dyes Deep Magenta, Caribbean Blue, and Brilliant Yellow. Now, the Caribbean Blue is not a 1% stock solution with one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid. And the pink and yellow used to be 1% stocks, uh, but I may have edited, the, edited that going forward. But my plan is to take these colors and mix them by feel a bit. I'm aiming to get a purple, a red, a yellow, and a blue. Here is our color palette. I would say that the red, it definitely is gonna break. It breaks a little bit more orange, but I think that that is okay. Uh, we'll see what it looks like on the yarn. And well, now we just need to get the yarn ready to go. And there's one last thing that I need to do. I wanna add acid in with our dyes. A lot of times I add acid in with the yarn and not with our dyes but there is no reason why we can't mix things up from time to time. Here I am adding one teaspoon uh, or about five milliliters of white vinegar to each of these cups. And I feel like I have a similar amount of volume in each one. I didn't measure, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Back to the counter, I want to wipe it down really well before we bring over the yarn. There is some liquid in with our yarn, but it's not that much. And I wanna scrunch it, because the plan is yes, I want to have something pixely where I feel like the colors will sort of start and sort of smooth and move into one another. It'll make more sense once I start. But uh, I also, I think want to give myself a shape that's gonna be easier to do this, and it's gonna be okay. Things aren't gonna be perfectly repeating. I think it's gonna be really, really fun. Okay, so I think we're gonna start like this. Uh, and the way I'm gonna do this is gonna be very simple. I'm gonna take these droppers and add little bits of color onto the yarn. Now, my plan is to have something more concentrated of each color down at its relative corner, but then we'll start sort of blending into each other. So think of it sort of like that color mixing that I referenced, uh, but we're gonna bring things in closer and closer. And so I'm very excited with how this is gonna go. Now, the one thing I don't know, and sort of bringing this in, I don't know how far these colors are gonna go into one another, if that makes sense. Um, so I don't know quite, and I'm bringing sort of them out more. We'll add more and more, because flipping this might be a little complicated. But we will see, this is a really fun way to play around with some of these colors. Uh, I think it would be really fun to do something like this on a sock blank as well. Just sort of bringing them more into other areas. 
in this middle we sort of have little bits of all of them but now I kind of just want to increase the amount of color a little bit and just paying attention trying to not let the color spread too too much but also I don't want huge areas of white that are left behind either and I really couldn't tell you how things would be vastly different or similar if I was going to do this with acid in the yarn versus just acid in with the dyes. That is not something I really know, but you see we can have these colors blend. I need to move the blue up into the purple a little more. And that is fine. And similarly, I want to move the purple back towards this blue. But the way I have it scrunched gives us a randomness to how they're placed that I think is going to be really fun. And when the yellow and the blue especially go on top of each other, we are going to see um, <laughs> some greens in there. The problem is the yellow I know is going to spread. Uh, that is one color that is hard to speckle with, so it's hard to say exactly what is going to happen with it. We need to bring our reds in. It's okay for them to kind of go into other territories and blend with each other more. But this is just really, really fun. Oh man, I just don't know what's happening on the other side and the best way to deal with that. Because uh, if I just flip, well, I think that that's what we're going to need to do. Um, I'm going to pick up the yarn, sort of wipe the counter up a little bit, and then flip it over, knowing that we're not going to go back exactly the way things were, um, because we just can't. Uh, I can't get it perfect as perfect as we had on that first side, but I am going to try. I'm gonna put the colors in their new spots and also shift the camera so we're all on camera. But I'm gonna to try to do something very similar, knowing that things are gonna blend from where they've been placed, things aren't being placed in the same spots, but the goal is to have this pixely feeling whether or not the colors spread and overtake some of the areas completely or not, whether or not we have transfer between different areas or not. This is a lot of fun. Oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> Andy, I really hope you're gonna love this. When I first talked with Andy, she mentioned some kind of pixely game that I'm not familiar with, but I thought it would be fun to bring that like pixely thing into here. Now we need to heat set everything. And I could let everything sit for a while uh, here on the counter, but I think I wanna go ahead and start, and start steam setting it now. I don't really want to use any plastic wrap, so my plan, there's really not that much, oh shh, dankies. <laughs> oh man, was that even on camera? Maybe. <laughs> okay, there's not that much dye on the counter. Oh my goodness. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is try to put it here in this little pan in a way that kind of keeps the colors a little bit separate. And actually, we can add a little bit more yellow some more blues, one or two more reds, just because there were some areas that looked a little more white. All right, now I'm gonna go steam set this for 30 minutes and put everything in secondary containers so I don't make more mistakes. No! Okay, I think I put the blue thing in the green. I think we're okay. <laughs> I think no blue got in my yellow, so it did not turn green. Oh my goodness. I have plans for these colors for another project. So I'm just going to set this aside and use it later, and I will clean this all up now. The yarn has been steam setting for more than 30 minutes, 
and I'm feeling a little perplexed because I had a timer and I must have turned off the timer and then done nothing. Uh, our purple broke, giving us some really lovely like pink notes in there. Oh, that's fun. Okay, I'm gonna set Andy's yarn aside to cool completely uh, so then I can wash it once it is cool. But I think that it is a lot of fun. Time to wash the yarn. And we're using Blue Dawn today. Not that there's any problem with Blue Dawn. Uh, it doesn't list, I just checked the ingredients, it doesn't list what the colorants are. But I don't think any of the colorants are ones that could dye wool. That would be a little counterproductive with a soap. But I like to mention it because occasionally it adds a hint of blue to the water, uh, which I always like to be aware of when washing a yarn. Now, I have another, I'm moving the zip tie because I'm curious. I have another project in mind with these colors. And I have a feeling that the yarns may end up feeling a little bit similar. But I don't know which video is going to come out first. So whichever one I edit second, I'll do a side-by-side -side of the yarns uh, in there. But I planned it because I thought the two techniques would be very common it would work well with the way I was going to set up the dies. And so it made sense with leftovers to do them on the same day. But anyway, I'm not seeing any color bleeding, which is fantastic. Oh, Andy, this kind of really looks like a, like a lollipop right now, with the way the colors are swir swirled with the white. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm going to stick the yarn in my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can take a look at the finished yarn. Andy, here is your pixelated yarn. Uh, I think that you can feel some of that pixel element in the way that the colors blend uh, in here. It's definitely not as sharp as it was when we saw it as it was dyed on the counter. I'm wondering if I can kind of put it back together a little bit color-wise. Um, maybe a bit, but of course flipping it did change things. Uh, this was so much fun, and I think it's just a unique colorway. So Andy, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you are going to love your yarn. And if you at home want to learn how you can become a lab partner like Andy, uh, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There are two main ways to sign up. One is that you can list through the projects I've already been working on in the last minute lab partner listing. You can pick a video that I've already started filming and then I will film some shout outs to include to you in that video. Or you can pick a yarn base, tell me some colors to avoid, and sign up with the lab partner listing. If you have a specific technique or project you would like me to explore, please reach out to me in advance so that way we can see if I have the yarns in stock or if I have the time in my schedule to execute the idea that you would like to see me create uh, in video form. Andy, thank you again. I mixed up more dye than I needed for this project. And at this point, I know that in the schedule, the other video is going to be coming out first. I actually took that leftover dye that I mixed here and put it in some squirt guns to dye some yarn with squirt guns. It was a lot of fun. Uh, that's also a technique that I did many years ago, but I thought I would just show the yarns side by side so you can see how there's similarities with the color, but the colorways are actually different and would knit up different. And not just because the yarn bases are different. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really enjoy mixing up the techniques that I showcase in my videos. And I enjoy playing around with different ways to apply color to yarn because sometimes you never know what's going to inspire you. And maybe you watch a video and think, gee, I hadn't thought about adding drops to the yarn. Ooh, that seems fun. Let's try that. And you could take something like this. And rather than having quadrants and sort of blending and having the way I went about it, 
You could pick a few colors and do the drops and layer them all over, continuing to add more and more colors and get something speckly and pixely from a hand painted technique. It might take a while, but that is something that you could do. And so you never know what's going to spark your interest in trying out a new technique. A lot of times when I'm dyeing yarn, I will sort of go through the same sort of technique in multiple iterations with tweaks because as I film a video and then edit a video, that inspires me to try another variation of the same project. And so I try then to spread the videos out as I publish them, but a lot of times that's sort of where my brain goes. Uh, and I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post at least twice a week and we have so much fun over here. Thank you. And I just think that this yarn is awesome. Thank you so much for watching.